Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjalayamban Mahalingam Engineering College, Kovil Vinni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Fluid Mechanics and Machines. And this is lecture number 12.3. The topic is Problem Solving in Centrifugal Pump. In the earlier two lectures, we discussed the theory part of the centrifugal pump. And in the lecture and the next lecture, we will be solving few problems from the Anna University question paper. The learning outcome to the students at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to solve problems in the centrifugal pump. Example number one from November 2014 question paper. A centrifugal pump delivers 0.18 meter cube per second of water against a head of 12 meter and runs at 620 rpm. The outer and inner diameter of the impeller are 0.4 meter and 0.2 meter respectively and the vans are bent back at the 38 degree to the tangent at the exit. The area of the flow remains 0.1 meter square from inlet to the outlet. Calculate the manometric efficiency, van angle at the inlet, loss of head at the inlet to the impeller when the discharge is reduced by 40% without changing the speed. So the data given to the problem, discharge Q equal to 0.18 meter cube per second, the head is 12 meter and the speed is 620 rpm, outer diameter D2 equal to 0.4 meter, inner diameter D1 equal to 0.2 meter. Van exit angle phi equal to 38 degrees. Area of flow from inlet to the outlet, it is constant A1 equal to A2 equal to 0.1 meter square. So we calculate the peripheral speed U1 and U2. Peripheral speed is U1 equal to pi D1 n divided by 60. Substituting 3.14 into 0.2 into 600 divided by 60 equal to 6.49 meters per second. And U2, peripheral speed at the outlet, pi D2 n by 60, 3.4 into 0.4 into 620 divided by 60 equal to 12.98 meters per second. So, we refer to the inlet and the outlet velocity triangle of the centrifugal pump and we calculate the flow velocity, flow velocity from the discharge, uh, V of 1 equal to V of 2 which is Q by A from the discharge in the area. So, Q discharge equal to 0.18 meter cube and the area is 0.1 meter square. So, this becomes 1.8 meters per second. And from the inlet velocity triangle, referring to the inlet velocity triangle, we take theta, theta equal to tan inverse of V of 1 divided by U1. So, you take the refer to the triangle. So, tan inverse of 1.8 divided by 6.49 equal to 15.5 degree. And referring to the outlet velocity triangle, VW2, the peripheral speed at the outlet VW2 equal to U2 minus, the total length is U2 minus this length. Thus, this length is V of 2 divided by tan phi. So, U2 minus V of 2 by tan phi equal to 12.98 minus 1.8 divided by tan 38 equal to 10.68 meters per second. And manometric efficiency we calculate from the definition manometric efficiency equal to GHM divided by VW2 U2 into 100. So, G is the acceleration due to gravity 9.81, HM is the manometric head 12 divided by VW2 equal to 10.68 into 12.98 into 100 equal to 85 percent. And now the second part of the problem, the loss of head at the inlet to the impeller when the discharge is reduced by reduced by 40 percent without changing the speed. So now the revised discharge Q equal to 60 percentage of the discharge. So 0.6 into 0.18 equal to 0.108 meter cube per second. And because of that, the V of star, the, there will be change in the flow velocity, V of star equal to Q star by A. 0.108 would be 0.1 equal to 1.08 meters per second. The original velocity triangle is ABC. So, for original discharge, it is ABC, and for the reversed discharge, it is DEC. DEC is the dotted line that indicates the reversed value, the AB value for reversed value. Then, V of star is the reversed the flow velocity. Now, OBC triangle ABC is the normal discharge, triangle DEC for the reduced discharge. So, loss of head equal to change in the peripheral speed square divided by 2g. So, change in the peripheral speed is AC minus DC. AC is the total length U1. DC is uh, the change in the peripheral speed. AC minus DC whole square divided by 2g. So, AC, AC equal to uh, U1 minus V of star divided by tan theta. So, the total length equal to AC minus DC square equal to U1 minus 
V F star divided by tan theta divided by 2 G. So, A C equal to U 1, D C equal to V F star by tan theta. So, 6.49 minus 1.08 divided by tan 15.5 whole square divided by 2 into 9.81 equal to 0.34 meter. So, the answer to the problem, manometric efficiency is 85 percent, van angle at the inlet is 20 degree and the loss of get is 0.34 meters. Problem number 2, example number 2 from November 2014 question paper again. A centrifugal pump running at 920 rpm and delivering 0.32 meter cube per second of water against a head of 28 meter. The flow velocity being 3 meters per second, if the manometric efficiency is 80 percent, determine the diameter and the width of the impeller. Blade angle at outlet is 25 degrees. So, we are given the speed is 920 rpm, discharge Q equal to 0 0.32 meter cube per second, head equal to 28 meter, flow velocity V of 1 equal to V of 2 equal to 3 meters per second, manometric efficiency is 0 0.8 and blade angle at outlet phi equal to 25 degrees. And referring to the outlet velocity triangle, we calculate the wheel velocity, VW2 equal to wheel velocity is VW2 which is u2 the total length minus the small length which is v of 2 by tan 5. So, u2 minus 3 by tan 25 equal to u2 minus 6.43. So, u2 is also unknown here. Now, we have another equation for vw2, vw2 equal to from the definition of manometric efficiency vw2 equal to g h m divided by u2 into manometric efficiency which is 9.81 into 28 divided by u2 into 0.8 equal to 343.8. 35 divided by u2. Now, we have two equations relating vw2 and u2 and we rearrange substitute use the equation to solve the unknowns. So, using the two equations 343.35 by u2 that is vw2 equal to u2 minus 6.43 rearranging the terms you will get a quadratic equation u2 square minus 6.43 u2 minus 343.35 equal to 0. So, in the quadratic equation, a, the coefficient a equal to 1, b, b equal to minus 6.43, c equal to minus 343.35. Solving the equation, u2 equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Substituting value of a, b, c, uh, 6.43 plus or minus square root of 6.43 plus 4 into 1 into 343.35 divided by 2 into 1. This becomes 6.43 plus or minus 37.6 divided by 2 equal to 22 meters per second. So, u2 equal to 22 meters per second. We take only sum, not the subtract, 6.43 plus 37.6 divided by 2 equal to 22 and 6.43 minus 37.6 will give the wrong answer, negative answer. Now, we calculate the diameter of the impeller d2 equal to u2 by pi into n. So, u2 is a peripheral speed divided by pi into n, u2 equal to pi dn by 60. So, using that equation 22 into 60 divided by 3.14 uh, into 320, 620 equal to 0.678 meters. So, which is 67.8 centimeter. So, the u2 we have to substitute in rpm. So, you, that is why you multiply by meters per minute, multiplying by 60. Then width of the impeller for the discharge. So, b2 equal to q divided by pi d2 into v of 2. So, the uh, substituting 0.32 divided by 3.14 into 0.678 into v of 2 equal to 3 equal to 0 0.05 meter which is 5 centimeter. The answer to the problem diameter of the impeller at the outlet 67.8 centimeter and width of the impeller at the outlet 5 centimeter. Example number 3, the Outer diameter of an impeller of a centrifugal pump is 400 millimeter and the outlet width is 50 millimeter. The pump is running at 800 rpm and is working against a total head of 15 meter. The val values of angle at the outlet is 40 degree and the manometric efficiency is 75 percentage. Determine the velocity of the flow at the inlet, velocity of water leaving the van, angle made by the absolute velocity at the outlet with the direction of motion at the outlet and the discharge. This question was appearing in November 2012 question paper. So, write down the given data after reading the problem, write down the given data. The outer diameter of the impeller d2 equal to 0.4 meter, outer width of the impeller b2 equal to 0 0.05 meter, speed n equal to 800 rpm, head hm equal to 15 meter, van angle at outlet phi equal to 40 degree and the manometric efficiency is 
0.75. So the peripheral speed at the outlet from the dimensions diameter and the speed u2 equal to pi d2 n divided by 60. So 3.14 into 0.4 into 800 divided by 60 equal to 16.75 meters per second. And the vertical velocity at the outlet. So from the definition of manometric efficiency, VW2 equal to G HM divided by U2 into manometric efficiency. So 9.81 into 15 divided by 16.75 into 0.75 equal to 11.71 meters per second. So referring to the outlet velocity triangle, the flow velocity at the outlet. So VF2 equal to U2 minus VW2 into tan phi. So U2 minus VW2 into tan phi that gives the V of 2, so V of 2 equal to 16.75 minus 11.71 into tan 40 equal to 4.23 meters per second. And the absolute velocity at the outlet, so referring to the velocity triangle once again, this is V2. So V2 equal to uh, VW2 plus V of 2. So VW2 plus V of 2 is the V2. So 11.71 square plus 4.23 square equal to 12.45 meters per second. So V2 equal to this length. So, the absolute velocity at the outlet and uh, the flow velocity at the inlet is equal to outlet. So, V of 1 equal to V of 2 which is 4.23 meters per second and the angle made by absolute velocity at the outlet. So, the beta, this angle is beta, the angle, this is the angle beta. So, beta equal to V of 2 divided by VW2. So, tan inverse of V of 2 divided by VW2 is the beta value which is tan inverse of 4.23 divided by 11.7 equal to 19.86 degree and this angle is beta value, the absolute velocity, angle of absolute velocity at the outlet. And discharge Q equal to pi d2 b2 into v of 2. So, pi d2 b2 is the area at the discharge, area at the outlet in the v of 2 is the flow velocity. So, 3.14 into 0.4 into 0.05 into 4.23 equal to 0.266 meter cube per second. Then the answer to the problem. Velocity of the flow at the inlet 4.23 meters per second, velocity of water leaving the van 12.45 meters per second, angle made by the absolute velocity at the outlet with the direction of motion of at the outlet is 19.86 degrees, discharge is 0.266 meter cube per second. Then example number 4, the internal and external diameter of an impeller of a centrifugal pump is 200 millimeter and 400 millimeter respectively. The pump running at pump is running at 1200 rpm. The van angle of the impeller at the inlet and the outlet are 20 degree and 30 degree respectively. The water enters the impeller radially and the velocity of the flow is constant. Determine the work done by the impeller per unit weight of the water. And this was appeared in November 2012 and November 2013 question paper. And the given data, inner Internal diameter of the impeller D1 equal to 0.2 meter, external diameter of the impeller D2 equal to 0.4 meter, speed equal to 1200 rpm, van angle at the inlet uh, theta equal to 20 degree, van angle at the outlet phi equal to uh, 30 degree. Now the peripheral speed at the inlet and the outlet U1 equal to pi D1 N divided by 60, so 3.14 into 0.2 into 1200 by 60 equal to 12.56 meters per second. U2 peripheral speed at the outlet U2 equal to pi D2 N divided by 60. So 3.14 into 0.4 into 1200 divided by 60 equal to 25.12 meters per second. And this is the inlet and the outlet velocity triangle of the centrifugal pump. So the flow velocity at the inlet. So referring to the diagram, V of 2 equal to V of 1 equal to U1 tan theta. So 12.56 into tan 20 equal to 4.57 meters per second. And the wind velocity at the outlet, referring to the outlet velocity triangle, VW2 equal to U2 minus V of 2 by tan phi, which is 25.12 minus 4.57 divided by tan theta, tan 30 equal to 17.2 meters per second. The work done per unit weight of the water. So W equal to U2 into W2, VW2. So 25.12 into 17.2 equal to 432 joules. And the answer to the problem, the work done per unit weight of water equal to 432 and example number 5 from May 2007 question paper, a centrifugal pump in which water enters radially delivers water to a head of 165 meter. The impeller has a diameter of 360 millimeter and the width of 180 millimeter at the inlet and the corresponding dimensions at the outlet are 720 millimeter and 90 millimeter respectively. The rotational speed is 9. 1200 rpm and the blade are curved backward at 30 degree to the tangent at the exit 
the discharge is 0.389 meter cube per second determine theoretical heat develop anemometric efficiency pressure rise across the impeller assuming loss equal to 12 percentage of the velocity head at the exit pressure rise and loss of head in the volute casing van angle at the inlet and the power required to drive the pump assuming overall efficiency is 70 percent and what would be the corresponding mechanical efficiency so we write down the given data head equal to 165 meter impeller diameter d1 equal to 0.36 meter impeller width at inlet b1 equal to 0.18 meter impeller diameter at outlet d2 equal to 0.72 meter impeller width at outlet b2 equal to 0 0.09 meter speed 1200 rpm van angle at outlet pi equal to 30 degree discharge equal to 0.389 meter cube per second the peripheral speed at the inlet and the outlet u1 equal to pi d1 n divided by 60 so 3.14 into 0 0.36 into 1200 divided by 60 equal to 22.61 meters per second u2 equal to pi d2 n divided by 60 3.14 into 0 0.72 into 1200 by 60 equal to 45.22 meters per second the flow velocity at the inlet from the discharge we calculate the flow velocity flow velocity at the outlet q equal to uh, q divided by pi d2 into b2 so 0.389 divided by 3.14 into 0.72 into 0 0.09 equal to 1.91 meters per second and referring to the velocity triangle outlet velocity triangle we calculate the virl velocity virl velocity vw2 equal to u2 minus v of 2 by tan phi which is 45.22 minus 1.91 divided by tan 30 equal to 41.91 meters per second and the absolute velocity so referring to the velocity triangle absolute velocity at the outlet v2 equal to v of 2 square plus vw2 square so which is 1.91 square plus 41.91 square equal to 41.95 meters per second absolute velocity at the inlet so v1 equal to v of 1 plus v of v of 1 equal to v of 2 so v of 1 equal to v of 2 v of 2 uh, and v1 the absolute velocity v1 equal to v of 1 flow velocity is equal to absolute velocity which is 1.91 meters per second and the theoretical head theoretical head equal to vw2 u2 divided by g vw2 u2 is the work done divided by g is the head the theoretical head 41.91 into 45.22 and uh, divided by uh, 9.81 equal to 193.2 meters meters then the manometric efficiency is Manometric head divided by theoretical head into 100. Manometric head is given in the problem 165 divided by 193.2 into 100 equal to 85.4 percent. So, manometric efficiency is 85.4 percent. And the pressure rise across the impeller. We write the Bernoulli's equation. So, P1 by W plus V1 square by 2G plus Z1 plus H theoretical equal to at the outlet energy P2 by W specific weight of water plus w v2 square by 2g plus z2 plus head loss in the impeller across the impeller so assuming z1 equal to z2 we rewrite the equation p1 by w plus v1 square by 2g plus h theoretical to p2 by w plus v2 square by 2g plus h loss rearranging the terms p2 by w minus p1 by w equal to v v1 square by 2g minus v2 square by 2g minus h loss plus h theoretical now p2 by p1 is the delta p pressure pressure rise pressure rise in the impeller divided by 9810 is the specific weight of water which is equal to 1.91 square by 2 into 9.81 minus 41.95 square divided by 2 into 9.81 minus 0.12 into head loss equal to 12 percentage of the velocity at the outlet so 0.12 into 41.95 square divided by the uh, 2 into 9.81 plus 193.2 so here the head loss equal to 12 percentage of velocity head at the outlet. So, velocity at the, at the outlet equal to V2 square by 2G. So, V2 equal to 41.95. So, calculating this is 92.94. So, re calculating again delta P of the impeller equal to 92.94 into 9810 equal to 9.117 in 10 power 5 newtons per meter square. So, the pressure rise across the impeller is 9.117 10 power 5 newtons per meter square. Now the pressure rise and loss of head in the casing, pressure rise in the casing equal to manometric head minus pressure rise in the impeller. Manometric head is 165 meter and the pressure rise in the impeller 1.9, 1.9.117 10 power 5 divided by 9810 is become 72.06 meter. 
So loss, loss of head loss in the casing, this is theoretical head minus manometric head minus head loss in the impeller, which is 193.2 minus 165 minus 10.76 is equal to 17.4 meter head loss in the casing. And referring to the inlet velocity triangle, the van angle at the inlet tan inverse of V of 1 divided by U1. So tan inverse of 1.91 divided by 22.61 equal to 4.83 degrees. The power required to drive the pump, considering the overall efficiency, power equal to rho g q into manometric head divided by the overall efficiency. So substituting 1000 into 9.81 into 0.389 into 165 divided by 0.7 equal to 899.5 meters, 899.5 watts. And the mechanical efficiency of the pump equal to overall efficiency divided by manometric efficiency 0.7 divided by 0.854 into 100 equal to 82 percent. So the answer to the problem, theoretical heat developed by the pump 193.2 meter, manometric efficiency 85.4 percentage, pressurized across the impeller 9.117 bar, pressurized, pressurized in the volute casing 72.05 meter, loss of heat in the volute casing 17.44 meter, van angle at the inlet 4.83 degree, power required to drive the pump 899.5 watts and mechanical efficiency is 82 percentage. We stop here. So, these are all the books I published in mechanical engineering and I upload the video lectures in the YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the channel, use the videos for your better learning. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments in the comments box. So, you can write to my mail ID or WhatsApp number for any clarification on the subject. We will meet again in another video lecture on the problem on the centrifugal pump with additional problems from the anionistic question paper.